This is not a big deal. It's just a negative three. X equals negative three, and this will be an overkill. There is no need, but I'm going to write it as Y equals zero. So I will start with, um, let, let's start from left to right. Where is my prop? I got my prop here. Okay, so before the vertical asymptote, zero down to negative infinity, not a problem. After the vertical asymptote, it's coming from positive infinity. Zero, one third is kind of difficult to plot, but I'm going to try. And three, one sixth is even lower and approaching zero. So from positive infinity, however, this has to be a hole, but I put it as a point. So I didn't mean that. It screams at me as being a hole and I fill it in by mistake. So here's the graph. Not touching the horizontal asymptote. Mine kind of looks like it's touching. Not good. Shouldn't be touching. So this is f of x, x minus 3, x squared minus 9. And this is the whole 3, comma 1 over 6. Can anyone identify the range for us? Carefully take it from negative infinity. Oops. Oops. I said two oops is. So from negative infinity to zero, that's an oops. Union zero to one over six. Union one over six to infinity. Any questions? Any questions on this? Why is it uh, one over six? Say it again. Why is it one over six? What did you get? Okay, let me zoom in. Where's my calculator? I, I want to show this anyway. Let's do this together. So in y equals, please be very careful how you plug it in. Let me remove my stat plots because I'm doing that with my students and you will be in the way. I will not be able to graph it. Okay, y equals. Please put parentheses around the top. x minus 3 divided by, please put parentheses around the denominator, x squared minus 9. As you see, my calculator is wrapped because I spilled water on the previous one, so I had to purchase another. So I'm trying to discipline myself. Okay, because the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0, we do not need to enter it as a function, but and I should have done this, and I will do it in a minute after we finish. Here, the calculator will not present y equals 4 if we don't put it in as an extra function. So we're going to go back and graph that in a minute. But here there is no need to write 0 because you, the calculator will graph the, the x-axis anyway. So there is no need for that. You can. It's not going to hurt. So now, uh, let's change the viewing window. Why I would like to change the viewing window? Because of your excellent question, why do I have to exclude 1 over 6? Because from my graph is not very clear. So first I'm going to, let's use the standard viewing window to see the graph. Let's use zoom standard. And here's the graph. The calculator is not sensitive enough. It doesn't really show what we know about the function. It does not. But now I'm going to zoom in. And what I would like to see is basically this piece. That's all I care about. To show why we have to exclude 1 over 6. So I'm going to say from negative 1 to positive 4 with a scale uh, with the um, um, negative 1 to positive 2 or positive 1. Okay? So 
negative 1 uh, to uh, positive 4. And scale is 1. But I want y minimum to be negative 1. And y maximum, uh, y maximum to be 2. Okay? Now let's see what happens. So it should show a little blip where there is 1, 2, 3. Right here, it should show a little hole. It doesn't. So I'm going to zoom in and even further. Uh, because this height is 1 over 6, I will go to 1 half. So viewing window, very good question. Thank you. 0.5 with a scale of 0.25, let's say. Y, what did I do? Negative 1 to 4, 1, negative 1. Ah, I know. So it's negative 1 indeed, and then I want 0.5. I put minus instead. And this is 0.25. Okay. It still doesn't show, but if you plug in second and uh, table, if I want to put in 3, look what happens. So we know the calculator does, does not show us the correct graph. So go back to graph. See what happens? I cannot, I cannot show it because it doesn't show a hole. But see, the function exists here, will exist immediately after 0, but it will not exist at 1, of, 1 over 6. At that point, the function does not exist. So we have to exclude 1 over 6. There is no value of x that will make the function to be 1 over 6. It, could, it would have been 3, but I cannot plug in 3. So 1 over 6 is not in the range. So I don't know if, if there is anything I can do to show you the, the, the fact that the, there is a hole in the graph. Uh, the, graph the calculator will not is not sensitive enough. So maybe if I go to... Uh, y minimum, let me make y minimum uh, 0.1 and y maximum 0.5. Let's see. Even with a scale of 0.1. Let's see. Show me the blip. Nope. Nope, it does not. Stubborn. So minimum, maximum, scale. Okay, let me say around 3. Let's say between 2 and 4. Ah, I got it. See the, the hole? So the function exists from 0 to 1 over 6. There is a hole. And then from 1 over 6 to infinity. Does everyone see the hole in the graph? I see it. It's right here at 3. But see how many times I had to zoom in or change the viewing window? The calculator is not as smart as you are. Okay. Is it clear why now the range is this? Did I, did I answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Very good question. Thank you. Was it Alex? Yeah. Good. Well done. Finally, type 3. Before we write type 3 or talk about type 3, I, I want to write a note. A function may, a rational function, of course, rational function, may cross, may cross a vertical, a horizontal asymptote, sorry, horizontal asymptote and a slant which I haven't presented yet it's it's slant is for type 3 a slant asymptote comma but never never ever a vertical asymptote it's undefined there how can you cross it but can you cross a horizontal and slant yes it can it can cross a horizontal and you can cross a slant. 
Okay, what's the deal with this land? A function like this one, type 3, may have a slant asymptote. Instead of, so type 3 may have a slant asymptote, but never, ever a horizontal asymptote. Never, ever. Does it have to have a slant? Let me think if all of them have a slant. Um, probably yes. But they will never have a horizontal asymptote. So the type 3 is some degree at the top and degree n in the denominator and n plus 1 at the top, or n and n minus 1, it doesn't matter. But since we wrote it as n plus 1 over n, can anyone choose? Those problems are not between 57 and 80. However, they are between 81 and 88. They are a different animal. 81 and 88 on page 427. And then after this, I'd like to look at some more problems. Where is this applicable? Oh, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. So let's graph the other one, be only because I want to uh, remind you that this function will not appear unless we put it in. So our function was uh, 4x. Because it's a product, you don't have to put parentheses, but I'd rather put parentheses because we we may forget. And parentheses definitely for the denominator. That's mandatory. But now you have to put this y equals 4 as a new function. And choose the uh, zoom standard. And here it comes. We have no secrets here. I don't know how to make the calculator present the vertical asymptote. It should. The older calculators will always, they always had the vertical asymptote. I don't know why these new ones don't, but I think there is a little feature that I have to activate to show the vertical asymptote. Okay, so keep that in mind. The horizontal asymptote will not automatically appear if you don't put it in. But if it's the horizontal, if it's the x-axis, I don't have to. Okay, so let's choose a... Um, Type 3, and uh, let's graph it. 81 through 88. 87 it is. 87. Where are you, 87? Good. Excellent. f of x equals x to the third plus 1 over x squared plus 2x. It's definitely not type 1 because degree over degree is not the same degree. It's definitely not type 2 because type 2 has a higher degree in the denominator. So it's definitely type 3. So degree 3 at the top and degree 2 in the denominator. I get my table going. What will be the only difference? The only difference will be the slant asymptote. Everything else is the same. X and Y intercepts, vertical asymptotes, everything the same. So, of course, I will immediately factor the denominator and the numerator. And my question is, does anyone remember how to factor the numerator? The denominator is very clear. Does anyone remember how to factor a sum of cubes? I know it was a long time ago, like a month and a half ago, but the sum of cubes factors into a binomial times a trinomial. And this is a plus, and this is a minus. Plus, plus, minus. What do I have here? Which fact, which term I cube to get x cubed? That's very clear. It must be yes. Which term I cube to get 1? 
that's also clear. And now the pattern, if you remember, I square this, I square this, but in the middle, it's not the two times the first times the second, it's just the product of those two. Good. Can anyone now give us the uh, domain of this function? Anyone? Two. Zero and negative two. Does x disappear? No. So it's a VA. Does x plus two disappear? No. I have this immediately. I'm not waiting for the sign. So I will use negative 2.1 and negative 1.9 and negative 0.1 and 0.1. You can say, is there a way of doing this with a calculator? Yes, there is. Here it is. Let's put the function in, y equals. Clear everything else. Don't forget parentheses around the top. Crucial. Plus 1. Because otherwise it will graph and it will do a whole lot different x squared plus 2x, oops, parentheses, I've talked too much, I know. x squared plus 2x. Close. And now I go to second and table, and I plug in my numbers. Negative 2.1, it's negative, fine, no problem. Negative 1.9, okay, it's positive, thank you. A negative 0.1, Negative number, fine. And point 0.1, okay, positive, thank you very much. So what have I accomplished so far? A lot. I have the domain, I have the vertical asymptotes, and I have the behavior next to the vertical asymptotes. Okay, so there is no reason to plug in zero, because the function is undefined at zero. But there is one solution, right? So f of x equals 0, a fraction is 0 when the top is 0. But this will never be 0. You can try. It has imaginary solutions, but I have an x minus 1. Final step. Like before, if you remember the horizontal asymptote, Horizontal asymptote gives the end behavior. If there is no horizontal asymptote but slant, the slant asymptote will give the end behavior. Okay, how do I find a slant asymptote? Note, slant asymptote is the quotient only the quotient of the division x to the third plus 1 over x squared plus 2x. And now you know what we did, section 3.3, for this. I cannot use the synthetic division. I can only use the long division. A lot of terms are missing. The term with x squared is missing. The term with x is missing, so plus 1 and I divide by x squared plus 2x. Okay, so then what do I do? x squared times what is x cubed? x. x times x squared is positive x cubed, subtract. x times 2x is 2x squared, subtract. I don't have where to write it. It's the next in line. Okay, negative 2x squared. x squared times what is negative 2x squared? Minus 2. Negative 2 times x squared is negative 2x squared. Change the sign. Negative 2 times 2x, negative 4x. Change the sign. Plus 1. 
It's not yet. 4x plus 1. And this is the remainder. I'm done. Because I cannot say x squared times 1 is 4x. Not possible. So this is the quotient. Y equals x minus 2 is the slant asymptote. Just the quotient of the division. So I go back to my table. I write y equals x minus 2 is slant asymptote. And I know that this is the way it looks. It's a line with a positive slope. Can anyone give us the end behavior for this line? Where does it come from and where it's going? Because it has a positive slope. If it had a negative slope, we would have looked like this. But it has a positive slope. It looks like this. We're going to have to graph it, like we always graphed the horizontal asymptote and the vertical. Now I have to graph the slant. But what is the end behavior? Where does it come from? Two. That's the end behavior of the function mandatory.